Peace to the family. Gotta love y'all, gotta love y'all. Love my supporters. I thank you for always staying in tune. And so I have a short segment for you today, only because of my phone battery. You know, I'm always traveling. I'm actually about to fly out again. It's been a great run. I've been traveling a whole lot. For those of you that's been keeping up with me, you know that I've done been to Ohio, Atlanta, um, New York, Chicago, the obvious LA, and I'm about to head out again to Miami. Uh, the reason why we go to Miami so much because we just got properties out there, group investment, a lot of good brothers and sisters involved in addition to some of my own personal things that I got going on, especially with Sister Victoria. We looking real good out there. <clears throat> just wanted to say thank you all for supporting. And I always wonder, like, for the people that go out their way to make every single thing I do evil, everything that I do that's wrong, I always look to see what exactly do they teach. I'm always looking to see what is it that they do. So let me clear up a few things for some of you out there. Some of you said, man, he waited some time so he could slip back into the conscious community. Not exactly. I'm doing my brother a solid. My brother asked me to do some interviews for him. And I said, you know what? I don't mind. We reconciled our issues. I got tough skin. And most importantly, I'm living a life of my own. As some may say, I'm living the best version of my life right now. And so since that's the case, I'm not as affected by things people say and do as I used to be because I don't have to participate in any of the things that they are involved with in order for me to thrive. And that has been the case for a very long time, but even more the case now. So I'm enjoying myself. I will be attending the NBA All-Star Game. We will have the best seats. I will be at the upcoming celebrity basketball game playing. So, uh, and that's coming. I'll give y'all the dates and the time. Y'all can come check me out. I do put in pain. I've been having a lot of fun. My last two celebrity basketball games brought home the MVP for the last one. Show love to your homie. All right. 28 points drop. Killing them, killing them. I wish they count the assists and everything, but it's all good. We're going to do that ourselves because, you know, I, I need all the stats. I need to have a well-rounded game because I don't need just points. I contribute in so many ways. So I'm having a great time, and it's a blessing that those of you who follow and keep up with the information, <clears throat> y'all do it and y'all stay true to it. But with these, these weird people that's out there, you know, what y'all don't understand, when I do those debates, when I do those debates, people threaten my life all the time, whether it's Christians, whether it's Muslims, whether it's Jews, doesn't matter who it is, Hebrew, Israelites, doesn't matter. And then the various sects or denominations thereof. With all that, anytime something happens, I got trolls from each of those communities because the nature of what I do has been debating. It brings me very zealous religious people who prey on my demise and my downfall through and through. And you know, so I get the, yo, we're gonna catch you. We're gonna catch your family. I get all sorts of stuff. I get all sorts of death threats and, you know, still to this day from zealous religious folks and all. But, you know, I'm from the streets and I'm glad people play their hand and they tell me how they feel and what they want to do. But I'm just cut from a different cloth. You know, I don't get so much idle time and free time on my hands where I sit down and say, you know what? Let me text somebody I'm scheming on to let them know how my plan is going to unfold. You know, only thing I can say is if you think I'm slow... You knock yourself out. But anybody that's sending me any form of death threats since years ago up into present day, always understand I had no problem traveling all over the place and letting people know where I'm going to be at. I be telling people, pull up. When I went to Ohio, I said, pull up at the airport and meet your brother. One of the brothers named Precise can attest to that. He was one of the first people at the airport. When I was in L.A., I said, yo, I'm going to be here at such and such time. Pull up brother was right there this is what I do now that doesn't mean that I'm gangster that just means you know I'm coming part I'm I'm forthcoming in my commitment to get my ass bust I need you to come forth and make sure you do the ass bust and when I pull up that's what I need you to do because y'all some of y'all got this thing really confused and I'm not gonna say anything incriminating but what I will say is 
I'm good everywhere I go for a reason. I'm good everywhere I go for a reason. And that's why I travel all over the place. And I always say pull up, but I don't say pull up to prove a point. I say pull up because I'm actually interested in connecting with my supporters. When I was in Chi Town briefly, I made sure we connected. And it's only because I had a one day meeting there and I really had to get back. Otherwise, I'd have stayed there a lot longer. Whole lot of love. In fact, my security, my publicists, my agents, my attorneys, everybody says polite, stop doing that. <clears throat> Because you're on a different level Stop just, hey, pull up and see me But you know, there's a trick to the pull-up aspect And we won't reveal that We just want to try the daredevil <laughs> But listen I don't know Who people think they be talking to, man But At the end of the day The people who talk the craziest things They haven't Been locked up for what I've been locked up for End of the day They ain't put in the type of pain I put in At the end of the day so is when you're dealing with someone like me the reason why you may look at me and say man he's passive or you know why brother polite don't go so aggressive because when you've been through enough in your life this is the turning stone this this is uh the milestone in my life where i'm like you know what people who've been through real stuff don't openly invite a lot of drama to their world people who've been through a lot people who did actual prison time people who escaped years of prison or escape death they tend to be like you know what i'm at a point someone could bump me while i'm walking down the block and i'll probably tell them sorry and see if i can get the hell out their way because they're probably someone that's suicidal but they don't want to feel the pain of suicide so what they're doing is looking for someone to take them out their misery and normally the people that hate their life that want to want out of their misery they normally find people who are doing great in their lives or ambitious or have great goals it's a magnetic thing so generally people who suck at life, generally people who don't have nothing going, for, going on for themselves in life, they tend to find people that are ambitious. And the people that are ambitious, you gotta be careful not to fall for the trick. You gotta be careful, because people who hate their life, they would kill themselves if they didn't have to feel pain. So the only thing that they can do is reach out to you, the ambitious, in hopes that you would sacrifice your life and take them out. And then their excuse in this lifetime could be someone killed me or someone beat me up. So you have to be careful. The ambitious people is who I'm talking to because you always got these knuckle dragging, low life people who want to lower your frequency, have you cussing up a storm and thinking up negativity and plotting and scheming on getting them before they get you to the point that you wind up losing your life. There's a lot of people who don't like life And this is why I do the mentoring I do the mentoring so you don't become the people That's low on energy Have low frequency thoughts And start being a burden to yourself Because once you become a burden to yourself You become a burden to those that love you And thus you become an energy vampire So the only way to get out of that situation Is to educate people And this is why I say After someone teaches you to hate me After they whole effort is Yo, we gotta tear him down you know, I had people talking about they're going to kill my children and kill my wives. This, yo, you have no idea. When I spoke to Brother Jabari in New York, he said, man, someone busts his car windows open and he's out of town and his wife is just there hurt and worried. And he's hurt and worried as a father and as a husband because, you know, he's not present to be there for his family because he's there traveling. This is what people do in the name of just disagreeing with comedic science. <laughs> so You know it is what it is It is what it is It's the leader's responsibility to make sure That people can think you slipping And they get caught out there But what I will not do Is reduce myself to the lowly status quo Of a negro Out here protesting What I'm about to do And how I can get it done I, I'm above that you know, and if you up to something, just do it. Knock it out. Just knock it out. Make it happen. Just do it. Because I'm telling you, no matter how much you lie to yourself and you trick yourself into thinking, yo, polite is just front. And no, I change. And that's why I could go in my hood. And when you see me in those videos, and no matter how much you say all oh, the cribs are low, that's fake. All of them is fake. No matter how much you keep trying uh, attempting to tell yourself when I'm in Jersey, when I'm in Brooklyn. That these people, nah, they all are unauthentic. The numbers keep adding up. 
And guess what? I only have rapport with my brothers and them because I put in work. That's a fact. And at this level in my life, everybody wants to see me continue teaching. I got people in the streets who just want me to teach. <laughs> Don't deal with none of that. And you know what? I commend those brothers. And the least I could do for them is not abuse my power and also encourage them to do better. So when I do these free streams, it's also for them. Because before I do these free streams, I text them brothers and I let them know, yo, I'm about to do a free stream. I need to educate you. I got some knowledge for you. So enough with that negativity. You know, I just want y'all to realize that a big part of manhood, I should have named it that. We got to do a class on that. A big part of manhood is demonstrating humility, not aggression. So you know you have Negroes who pride themselves in the conscious community who feel like, hey, I'm gonna disrespect this black man, I'm gonna yell at him, I'm gonna curse him out, and I'm gonna call him names. And then other people will be like, yo, he called you names, he talked about your wife. You should do something to him. And I'm like, man, the last time I dealt with someone for just calling my wife a name, I wound up in prison. This is a whole fact. I wound up in prison for murder. Like, so I'm telling y'all, I don't want no part of that. So when I come in the conscious community and conscious people are encouraging me to physically afflict somebody who's talking bad about my wife, I have to come to terms that the more popularity I get, the more aggressive trolls will be. And the goal of the troll is to hurt me. So if the trolls see I love my wives and my children, the trolls will inevitably disrespect my wives and my children. So at this point, now I just got to be selective who I'm going to hurt. I would have to hurt so many different people. So I got to be wise as a father and as a husband. If I really say I love my family and children, I got to demonstrate humility because that exercise, right? Humility is a, is a very difficult discipline. Humility. You know, people say humble yourself because I got nice cars and, and money. No, the humility I'm talking about is when people disrespect your family disrespect your children you might even be able to access them but you have to come to terms with the fact that everyone's entitled to their opinion because at the end of the day look how many white folks have terrorized our people if i don't go out here and i don't get one of the, if i don't clap back and any of the non-blacks have been terrorizing our people why should i to preference make sure i get a black person first so i gotta come logical with what i'm thinking and say you know what that'd be the Willie Lynch and me to say there's a long line of people from the time I've been born we should have clapped back at from the time I was born there's some people who already aligned themselves as a wannabe oppressor of me and my race thereof so why should I put one of our brothers in the front of the line and I get it you expect a lot from your own people but we got to really be for real the elephant in the room is y'all refuse to bang on the enemies of our race and what you do you choose to bang on each other because you're cowards now this don't mean that we won't put in pain if a brother violently aggresses us but what i'm saying is we have to exercise patience and we have to exercise humility as black men and we have to pick our fights because there's forces out here that'll do anything to trick us into being another statistic trick us into contributing to another fatherless household because of a lack of emotional discipline in the form of humility so i gotta talk to myself i gotta coach myself and i gotta coach you all because some of you are being tried some of you may have drama with male or females for whatever reason that may be pushing you to the point you're thinking violent and negative thoughts and i'm here just to be on live stream to give you good advice and say listen your life was way more important than anybody that is verbally antagonizing you. And if they get you to the point you feel like you're gonna have to physically afflict them, separate yourself from them as soon as possible. Se separate yourself from them as soon as possible because your life is worth that much more. You know why your life is worth so much? Because people wouldn't be ensuing you with the negativity if they didn't see your light. Cause that's how that works. The people who are violently aggressing you, whether it be verbal or physical, for no reason, or they're just over anxious and too committed to annoying you or tearing you down or antagonizing you. The truth of the matter is, it must be because there's something brilliant about you. It must be because there's something great about you. It's a whole fact. 
why else would somebody be so fixated on tearing you down unless they felt like, man, people will like you. Oh, you have some brilliance or you have great influence. <clears throat> Normally when people are committed to tearing someone down, it's because they feel other people see something great about them. People don't really be committed. People really don't commit themselves to tearing personalities down unless they see other people potentially invested in those personalities or actually invested in those personalities. And the name of the game for insecure people is they feel like no one is seeing them. So what they got to do is a game called infatuation or infatuating. And sometimes people start off loving you and the love transmutes into hatred. Infatuation or infatuating. Facts. Facts. It's a whole fact. That's a whole fact, people. <clears throat> it's infatuation or infatuating. <clears throat> this is real talk. Okay? So, you also have now, let's say we're dealing with economics. Right? Then you have what's the what's called the political polarization of global uncertainty. I say it again. The political polarization of global uncertainty. And why is that significant? Well, this is important because when you talk about the political polarization of global uncertainty, we're speaking about how even the concept of war in short, in a synopsis, in its most concise form, how even the concept of tensions amongst nations affect the economies in ways where it filters down into impacting the real estate market. And so, because Trump's in office, <clears throat> it's creating a political polarization of global uncertainty that in turn affects small businesses, the loaning agencies and real estate affiliated aspects thereof and you all have to prepare for that it also is going to affect pension plans and so these are the types of conversations that need to be had we have to have those kind of conversations this is why I tell people <clears throat> get with the mentorship we don't just give you a plan and an outline for today we give you a plan and outline for the future to come because the truth of the matter is things are not going to get easier unless you're being educated. I'm never just going to be negative and say things are going to get harder. I'm not into that kind of conversation. But what I will say is <clears throat> if you're not sitting here making sure you keep abreast of where to invest, how to invest, you're going to get caught out there. So here's another aspect of things. Cryptocurrency. What's the number one? shortcoming of people who just dive into cryptocurrency without a mentor or without some education <clears throat> which exchange do they use facts facts what exchange do you use yes okay so you heard about cryptos and normally what people do when they know nothing they see if they just invest in something that they could afford or something that they can't and I know you may say man what is that about Yes, you're either going to invest in what you can't afford under the pretense since you can't afford it, it should yield you some returns in real time. Pseudoscience. And then there's the other aspect where you say, you know what? I'm going to invest in what I can't afford because eventually it will make some money in due time. None of this is logical though. And then the number one aspect, the prerequisite step before you invest in that which you can't afford or cannot afford is not the metrics, not the analytics, not the algorithms. First step is which exchange do you use when it comes to the altcoins? The second aspect is you should diversify your portfolio. However, you shouldn't just buy a whole bunch of things at random, a whole bunch of altcoins at random. So these are facts. <clears throat> These are all facts. 
These are all facts. So the number one thing you want to focus on is which exchange. This is what we teach when we do the mentorship program. Question number one. Okay, you into cryptocurrencies. This is what my brothers and sisters tell me when they join. I'm into cryptocurrency. I'd be like, oh, cool. You into it? Which exchange are you using and why? Huh? Oh, you just investing. Well, you can't just trust any exchange. I ain't say put the money in my pockets as far as exchanges come in. I'm telling you, you can't just trust any exchange. These are facts. These are absolute facts. These are absolute facts. <clears throat> if you're interested in the mentorship program, email me at brother, P-O-L-I-G-H-T, 45 at gmail.com. P-O-L-I-G-H-T, 45 at gmail.com. Brother. P O L I G H T 45 at gmail.com. Always leave your full name and your phone number. <clears throat> Always leave your full name and your phone number. That's a fact. It's a whole fact. Okay? <clears throat> so the exchange that you use is very important. It's a prerequisite step before you even start saying, I'm going to invest my money in this and invest my money in that. You have to study the exchanges. And this is why I said whether you have a basketball player, basketball players have coaches, boxers have trainers, students in school have guidance counselors, all right? But when it comes to this money, you have nobody, you just wing it. You go to the bank and ask them questions before you close in on a house or purchase a house, and guess what? Their bank is the institution jerking you. <clears throat> you people so focused on what black people are doing to each other, it's the bank that's getting millions of dollars from all races jerking them, particularly black people. And mainly because black people's lacking knowledge. But then once you get the knowledge, then you get jerked a little less. <laughs> or a lot less, depending on how much knowledge you get. And if you have someone coaching you. <clears throat> but, you know, it's ego. Ego would tell us we don't need a coach. Ego would suggest to us that, you know what? I'll wing it and things will just work out right. That's what we do when it comes to sex. I'll just have sex and I won't get a disease. This is how we live our life. I'll spend this money and it'll magically come back. This is the mentality that we have because we quit on ourselves and we haven't acquired enough discipline through knowledge and mentorship for us to be able to facilitate and or execute task in an efficient manner. We don't have timelines. I will hope that you're not putting the wrong email there on purpose. It's brother with an ER. <clears throat> Brother, polite. <coughs> Brother, polite. 45 at gmail.com. Brother is spelled the right way. Brother, B R O T H E R. Polite. P O L I G H T. 45 at gmail.com. And this is what I'm saying. People go out their way to put out misinformation. But if you go to their page, I always go to these people's pages. I always make sure. Let me make sure I know what's going on. It's never someone doing anything remotely close to relevant, remotely close to our subject matter, or anything at all. And it's so interesting that this is how people want to spend their lives, but these are the suicidal people. Just think about it. The amount of time that someone has to spend. If I did a two-hour stream, they would stay here for two hours. If I did three streams for the day, they would use four, six hours out their life to make sure that they are a detractor. Now, only one, I can say you're probably an agent that's being paid to do this, or two, you're just suicidal. And soon you will take yourself out your misery. <clears throat> Someone sent me a video of a young Negro. I haven't seen or heard what he been talking about in a long time. But his whole premise was, and mind you, this, this Negro came and joined me to be part of what I'm doing. But now this Negro is saying, hey, he stole all my information. Why would you even want to associate your information with mine if you don't like me in the first place? And anyone knows, because I have publications that's out there. I got over 90 books that's out there. <clears throat> and we can actually see your timeline when you came in. What exactly was I teaching that I haven't been teaching now? And I do teach, I do evolve. But like, for instance, this cryptocurrency, or for instance, talking about the political polarization, right? The political p 
polarization of global uncertainty and retrospect to its effect on real estate. Who the hell is talking about these things? Who talks about these things? When I talk about common customs, which is a calculus system that precipitates culture by a process of differentiation and integration, we're able to find the value of smaller things and factorials of those equivalents, thus granting us the least adverse effects from the decisions that we make. When we talk about these things as part of our common customs in New Covenant culture, per our sovereign Bible, a publication that I put forth, written in scriptural form, that outlines <clears throat> jurisprudence. Who the heck came in the community teaching that, especially in this capacity? Now, I'm not one that's going to ego trip and say, man, I've created a bunch of new information and I put it forth. No, I present the information uniquely, but a lot of information already existed. Point blank. I'm not the type that's going to turn around and tell you, yo, I created every bit of information I convey. No, I articulate it. I express it. I convey it in unique form. My conveyance is what makes the information unique, not necessarily the information itself. That's egotistical. Oh, this person took my information. Fam, the information existed before you and I both were born. Sometimes you can be pulling information from the same sources. It happens. Like, what's wrong with people? This is why when people say I'm trying to sneak back in to part of my language tribe, people say I'm sneaking back into the community. Oh, no. I still want to keep my space. I'm conscious. I'm a member of the conscious community by virtue of the fact I consider myself conscious, but that's as far as it goes. I don't want to be tied in to none of these weird Negroes whose focus is more on or their priority is, you know what, to be better than the other teacher or to feel insecure if another teacher has X amount of momentum. <clears throat> let me tear them down in hopes I can take their following. I'm not into none of that. But at the end of the day, I know the reason why leaders are not cooperating with each other is because they're all broke. The leaders don't get along because they're broke. They can't afford to get along because they believe it, it compromises their business model. <clears throat> they believe it compromises their business model. So they can't afford unity because then they will have to divvy up the revenue streams from the DVDs they're pushing. I don't have time for all of that. I'm not interested in none of that. Hold on, family. Let me see if I could charge this phone up a little bit more. But again, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. Brotherpolite45 at gmail.com for mentorship. You always have to leave your full name and your phone number. But like I said, <clears throat> today's the day I make the effort to call people directly again. <clears throat> Let me see if I can. Yes, hopefully this thing works. Hopefully. Let's see if we can let there be light. My phone is black. Oh man. Thought we could have charged this. Hold on. Let's see if that does anything. Nope. Damn, fam. Let me see how much percentage I got. <sighs> yeah, it's definitely crab in the barrel syndrome. I could barely see anything on the phone, but I definitely saw that. <laughs> I definitely saw that. Yo, we gonna vibe for a few more minutes. Then I gotta let this phone charge up. But yeah, always leave your full name, your phone number. Like I said, a little bit of time invested into research take you a long way. Invested in a coach, I know is a very weird concept and strategy, but when I moved out here to LA and I got around a lot of successful people, I found out all these people had some kind of life coach. You know, I created a lane called Conscious, Envi Conscious Advisory because I believe I take on a more holistic approach towards mentorship, which is inclusive of holistic health, social, abilities and the execution thereof as well as the convention of finance as far as what direction we should go per my personal experience not per any credentials because people say yo you got credentials no I don't my only credentials is my experience and my success and I do have the right to share my story so that's what I do for my students I just share my story uh <clears throat> 
I don't know if any of the so-called competition travels as much as I do without even having to do a lecture. Think about that. I don't even have to have a lecture and I'm booked to travel so many places. Those of you that have been keeping up with me, I was in LA courtside at the Clippers game. From there, I went to Ohio, stayed there two days. <laughs> they created the conspiracy that um, I went on a work site, used dangerous equipment, and I videotaped everything to perpetrate a heinous act that this was all my site so I could usurp other people's business. Cool. I put out my rebuttal and repudiation. And again, I, I know why it really happened. I had a quarter million views in two days. I had a quarter million views in two days. Yet I'm next to my business partner, who we're both highly invested, Jay McNeil, Jonathan McNeil, who is the subcontractor for that particular uh, venture. So I get it. People want to say polite, you have nothing to do with the whole situation. Yet my business partner is the one that's whose intellectual property is being used per our company <clears throat> to erect structures in the capacity that would further <clears throat> the agenda of the people who did the hiring. Yet and still, my brother Jonathan McNeil and I, we have our own business endeavor as it relates to the intellectual property that corresponds with the premise at hand her future endeavors and other pending projects that already exist in Ohio. So it's our right to be able to say, this is what we can do, this is our capabilities, and we're providing jobs on account to this. <laughs> so yes, of course, <clears throat> we have nothing to do with anything. He's just subcontracting and providing the labor to do a very unique job and service. It happens. And of course, I went on, I went to use machinery, my phone died when I was live streaming, and then I actually went to stream again on the same site. All in the name of, let me hurry up and do this for a couple hours and get out of here and fly out to Atlanta. <clears throat> Where we had a photo shoot in Atlanta. All right. To contribute to the EPK or the electronic press uh, kit or package, the electronic press kit for Victoria Lamar. All right for her artistry plus I had interviews so our schedules was running concurrent and in similar fashion we had work in New York especially pertaining to the Grammys <clears throat> so let's think about all of this and now we're embarking upon the acquisition of a condo in Miami at a very beautiful luxurious spot that we know guaranteed to get energy and activity in Miami so Victoria and I are going back out there to handle that business you know because that's what it is. That's how we move. So you got to say, okay, do this at the Clippers game, course side, boom. Not nothing new. This is what I do between the Lakers and Clippers game. California, we go to Ohio two days. We leave for Atlanta, stay there for two days. We leave from Atlanta, stay in New York for about a week. Because we went to New York for the Grammys. Which you only get in there from private invite. So we flew out there for the Grammys and then did some post-Grammy uh, activities. <clears throat> <clears throat> went to Chicago from Chicago back to LA and heading out again tonight come on y'all like y'all gotta be for real and none of this says polite has to lecture for money none of that none of that says polite has to lecture for money it's chronicalizes you can look through the catalog of things that I have on my Facebook and on my Instagram and you can clearly see <clears throat> I'm too busy to deal with the BS that people are looking to introduce into my life. The only reason I do this is because I wish people would have shared information with me for free on their free time when I had little to no resources so I could kind of find out how to get my feet wet, where to, where to put my foot in. I wish somebody took the time out to do this. I wish we had social media. <coughs> I wish we had social media during my coming up and upbringing when I was banging. And I wish somebody was just dropping information on the shrimp just to give me some kind of direction. Yes, no, something I have to pay. Peace.